Glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. What another beautiful and awesome and amazing day today to always be in the presence of the Lord. Seek him where he may be found. If you draw closer to Jesus, Jesus will draw closer to you. And he is so awesome to be praised. Every day is a day to give him thanksgiving and praise and worship in the house of the Lord. Every day is a day just to say thank you, Jesus. Thank you for waking me up. Thank you, Jesus, for my health and my strength. Thank you, Jesus, for my eyesight. Thank you, Jesus, for my hearing. Thank you, Jesus, for my voice. You just got to tell Jesus thank you. You ain't got to really want nothing, but just tell him thank you. Just let Jesus know, say thank you, Jesus, for another day. Because a lot of people didn't even wake up today. A lot of people didn't even get the chance and opportunity to even say thank you. See, praise is an everyday thing. It's not an on and off switch thing. It's not a seasonal thing. It is an everyday thing. Because the God we serve, the God we praise, he is still on the throne, and he is still performing miracles and wonders each and every day in the mighty name of Jesus. He is still in the healing business. He is always in the blessing business. God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. And he is so worthy, so worthy to be praised. Amen, amen. And God has a word for somebody today. And someone needs to hear this today. Before we get into this word, let us pray. Heavenly Father God, Abba Father, we just come before you peacefully and humbly right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for this word that we better receive. We thank you, Father God, for this powerful message today. This is going to keep us full, going to keep us satisfied. Heavenly Father God, there's no place that we'd rather be at right now today, Jesus, but right here in your house, in your sanctuary, Father God, lifting you up, glorifying you, magnifying you, and always putting you first place. Oh God, you have your way with us right now today, God, in your house. Allow your presence to move through this place. Allow your love and your energy to move through us right now. Touch us right now. Speak to our heart right now. Soften our heart right now, Father God. Father God, you are in complete control. You are in complete control, Father God over every last one of our situations, Father God, in our circumstances. Father God, even though we might not see anything happen, Jesus, but Father God, we're here today to let you know that we still trust in you. We have came too far in our assignment to turn back now. We have came too far in our mission to be complaining, trying to throw in a towel. Oh God, we thank you for the day. Oh God, we glorify your name right now today. Oh God, we magnify your name right now today. Oh God, we exalt your holy name in your house. Right now today, a lot of angels to join us in praise and worship right now today. And Father God, let your words go out and it should not return back void. Heavenly Father God, we're here today to let you know that we are available for praise. We are available for service. We are available for the kingdom. We are available right now today, Jesus, for us to continue to do our Father's will. But most of all, Jesus, we are available for you. Father God, you are welcome. You are invited. You have an open invitation right now today, Jesus in your house right now, in your sanctuary right now, Father God. Father God, you have an open invitation. You're invited right now today into my sister's home right now, into my sister's life, into my brother's home right now, into my brother's life, right here on your YouTube channel right now today, Father God, on your platform right now today, Father God. You are welcome. You are invited. You have your way, Father God. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. You are invited right now today on Jesus' YouTube channel right now, on his platform right now, and my brother's house right now, to my brother's home right now, and to my sister's house, and to my sister's home right now. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to calm us down. I'm asking you to speak to us right now today. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to touch us right now today. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to comfort us right now and let us hear the word of God. Let us hear him speak to us. Let him touch us right now. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to let all my brothers and sisters, let them catch the Holy Ghost fighting right now for our Holy Spirit. Oh God, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity, Father God. Father God, it's always a blessing, always a pleasure to always pray and fellowship with all my brothers and sisters around the world, around the globe right now. Oh God, we're going to continue to thank you. We're going to continue to lift you up. We're going to continue to glorify you, Jesus, because praise is what we do, Jesus. And we give you all the thanks. We give you all the praise. And we give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen and amen and amen. We serve an awesome God. We serve a mighty God. We serve a big God. We serve an amazing God. We serve a God who's the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He will never turn his back on you, my brothers and sisters. God is so good. I said, God is so good. Tell somebody right now today that God is so good. Tell somebody right now that God is so amazing. Tell somebody right now today that God is on your side. Tell somebody right now. I serve a, a promise and a faithful God. He is too faithful. He is too faithful to leave you. Too faithful to fail you. Our God has it going on. Amen. Amen. Just like praise is an everyday thing. Praying is an everyday thing. Repentance is also an everyday thing. Why? We all drop the ball. We all make mistakes. We all fall short of God's grace and mercy each and every day. Even that's what others do. That's why we depend on him. That's why we lie on him. Because we need him. We fail today. We made some mistakes today. We dropped the ball today. We're not perfect at all. So that's why it's so important, my brothers and sisters, to always confess our sin to Jesus. It doesn't matter how big the sin is, how little it is. Sin is sin. And if you don't confess your sin to Jesus, you tell him, Jesus, that you're perfect. And we know that you're not. So there's no need to try to hide it. There's no need to try to sugarcoat it. There's no need to try to sweep it up on the mud. Because he saw what you done. He heard what you said, and he was already aware of the, of the situation. So if you can't keep it real and be honest with Jesus, you can't keep it real and be honest with nobody. So I need my keep it real brothers and sisters right now to join with me in repentance, if that's okay. Lord Jesus, I ask of you to please forgive me, all my brothers, all my sisters, for every anything, Jesus, that we've done wrong in the sight of your eyes. Father God, please forgive me. All my sisters, all my brothers, for every anything, Jesus, that we had in our heart, that was not part of you. Father God, please forgive me. All my sisters, all my brothers, for every anything, Jesus, that we had in our mind, that was not part of our Father's will. Please forgive us, Jesus. Wash us clean, my man, today, Jesus. Purify us through your blood, my man, today, Jesus. Wash us as white as snow, my man, today, Jesus. Father God, I want to say thank you right now today for forgiving us for our sins. Thank you, Father God, for not remembering our sins anymore. Thank you, Father God, for the clean new sleep. Thank you, Father God, for the new opportunity. Thank you, God, for the second chance. Thank you, Father God, for coming through. Thank you, Father God, for hearing us out. I want to say thank you. You didn't have to do it, but you did anyway. I want to say thank you. And before I get started, it's something that's always in my mind about you, Jesus. Before I get started, it's something that stays in my spirit about you, Jesus. Before I get started, it's something that's always in my heart about you, Jesus. And I just got to tell you how I really feel about you, Jesus. I can't thank you enough, 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 Jesus. I can't thank you enough. That's why I praise you the way I do because I can't thank you enough. That's why I glorify you the way I do because I can't thank you enough. That's why I shout out your holy name the way I do, Jesus. Because I can't thank you enough. That's why I pray. That's why I boast about you all day long, Jesus. Because I can't thank you enough. That's why I'm in love with you the way I am, Jesus. Because I can't thank you enough. That's why I put my heart at you every day, Jesus. Because I can't thank you enough. That's why I put my faith, my trust, my hope in your hand every day, Jesus. Because I can't thank you enough. 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 Glory, hallelujah. I just can't thank you enough. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. And if you read it for God's word, let the church say amen. But let Jesus know right now that you can't thank him enough. I'm going to get right into this word with the, with the spirit put in my, in my spirit for me to talk about today. And what Jesus is saying right now, and what you've been saying for quite some time, some of y'all right now today, you're auditioning like you're going on American Idol. Your praise is like you want attention. You praise like you want people to see you. You praise and pretend like you don't get an award. You praise 
pretend like you don't get a contract deal. This is not American Idol. It's not my sisters. It's not my brothers. See, if you're going to praise Jesus, you praise him with your heart. But a lot of y'all, you want attention when you praise. You want to fall out in church while you praise. You want to call the sea while you praise. You want to be noticed while you praise. But when you are auditioning for your praise, everything about your life is out of order. And you wonder why you're not hearing from Jesus the way that you should be hearing from him. You wonder why things are not lining up in your life. It's because it is you that is out of order, my brothers and sisters. You got everything lined up in first place beside Jesus. You got family, dreams, business, and somewhere down the line, you got Jesus. Jesus should always be number one. He should always be number one, no matter what it looked like. Jesus, family, then so forth. When you go to church, Jesus, then everything else come after that. But you ain't got to audition to praise Jesus' name. You ain't got to put on no show to praise Jesus' name. You ain't got to shout and call the scene to praise his name. You ain't got to fall out to praise his name. You don't need attention to praise his name. When you praise, it should always come from your heart. You ain't got to put on no addition like you go on American Night and be praying from your heart. Your praise is going to speak for itself. Jesus is going to recognize your praise. And he told me to tell somebody, he said, a lot of y'all right now today, you are auditioning for American Night because your praise is not coming from your heart. Your praise is coming from your mouth. And that's why your vending machine, everything about your life is out of order because your praise, how you praising me, is out of order. He said, you ain't got to do all that what you're doing every Sunday at church. Don't think I don't see how you cutting a fool. Don't think I don't see how you expect everybody to see you, shoot, you hoop and holler. Don't think I don't see how you walling all on the ground. Don't think that I don't see what you are doing just to get my attention. He said, you ain't got to do that to get my attention. All you got to do is praise me from your heart and you will have my attention. You ain't got to put on no show to get my attention. You ain't got to be around a lot of people to get my attention. Your praise, when it comes from your heart, I will draw close to you and you will draw close to me. I will recognize your praise from your heart. And how Jesus does that, he tests everybody's heart. He don't ask y'all who is going to be contestant number one or contestant number 50 for an audition. He knows who praised him for real. He knows who put him first place for real. Them are the people that he seek first. Them are the people who he talk to because everything about them is in order. When your life is out of order, that means you don't have Jesus number one in your life. And right now, you know exactly who you is. You ain't got to tell me nothing. If things not going right in your life, that means it is something in your life is out of order. If you don't have Jesus first place, your life is out of order. If you're not praising him from your heart, your life is out of order. If you're not seeking him with, with your heart, your life and everything else is out of order. Some of y'all get mad at the vending machine because you're stuck your 75 cent in there to get your Coca-Cola. It's not wrong with the machine. It's something wrong with you. Jesus ain't mad at you. He ain't punishing you. It's something wrong with you because you don't have Jesus first place. You put on a show, you put on an audition just to get Jesus' attention. And you don't have to do all of that. But that's what some of y'all are doing. And he noticed that what y'all are doing. Y'all been doing it for quite some time. You think that you're going to get a reward. You think that you're going to get a bonus by praising the way that you're doing. And he said, what you doing that for? I know that you're acting. It ain't for real. He knows who's doing it for real and he knows who's putting on the show. 
So why are you putting on the show for Jesus when you can just do it from your heart? If you're going to put your heart into it, don't do it at all. It is you who are out of order, my sisters. It is you who's out of order, my brothers. That machine ain't got nothing to do with it. And there was a time in my life when my life was out of order. But things not going right in my life. It was years ago, 15 years ago. And I wonder why my life was out of order. I wonder why that things were not lining up. I wonder why I was not hearing from Jesus. I wonder why my things were not coming to me the way it's supposed to be coming to me. And everybody else was getting blessed. Everybody else was walking through doors. It's because I had my life out of order. <clears throat> and when your life is out of order, somewhere down the line, you don't have Jesus in the first place. I'm going to keep it real with you. And he tells us this not one time, not two times, but he tells us in three Bible verses, three Bible scriptures. So he already know that he means very, he means serious business. He already know that your heart is not into him. But you are signing up and putting on the show like you're going on American Idol, like Jesus is going to bless you with a reward. Like he's going to give you a prize for your praise. What did he do that for? When you're not doing it for real. When you're putting on the show. When you're putting on the act. Amen? Amen. So we're going to read from Isaiah 29, 13. Then we're going to read from Ezekiel 33, verse 31. And we're going to read from Matthew 15, verse 79. That's Isaiah 29, verse 13. Ezekiel 33, verse 31. And Matthew 7, 15, verse 79. And I need my brother and sister to write those three Bible scriptures down. And I need y'all to read it and meditate on it. So you, so Jesus can really speak to you. So you can get your life back in order. Because every last one of us has had our life out of order at one point in time. And my brother and my sister, I'm just here today just to share this word with y'all right now. Because if your life is out of order, that means something's wrong. And you got to figure out what's wrong. It ain't too hard to figure out what's wrong. It is because you are not putting Jesus for his place. Your heart is not lined up with his heart. When your heart is not lined up with his heart, everything about you is going to be out of order. Everything about you is going to be out of whack. That's why things are not going right. Amen? Amen. Isaiah 29, and we're going to read verse 13. If you got it, let the church say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord said, these people come near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship of me is made up only of rules taught by men. That's what the Lord will say. You see, y'all come to him with your mouth, but your heart is somewhere cold. Your heart is somewhere somewhere in, in the whole facility. But you come to them with your mouth. Like I said, a lot of y'all, you are auditioning for American Idol for Jesus to come to you. Like Jesus, will give you, like Jesus is going to give you a reward. He knows who's coming to him from the heart. And he knows who's praising him from their mouth. And so when you're doing it from your mouth, everything about you is already out of order. Everything about you is already out of control, it's out of whack right now. Your vending machine is messed up. But you can correct that. It's all up to you. See, you can fool me, but you can't fool Jesus. He knows who is praising him. He knows who is worshiping him. He knows who is seeking him. And he knows who's in love with him by their heart. That person who's doing that, they ain't putting on no show. They ain't putting on no act. They ain't falling out on the ground talking about hallelujah or I got the Holy Spirit. They ain't doing none of that. Their praise is real. Their worship is real. It's because their heart is in tune with Jesus. Whenever your heart is in tune with Jesus, Jesus' heart is going to be in tune with you because it is his heart that is inside of us. It is his kingdom that is continuing to keep us growing and spread. That's all it is. So your heart is not in it. So your heart is not in it. There's no way in the world that you really can love Jesus. If your heart is not in it, there's no way in the world that you can love your children, your spouse, or whoever it is. 
Your mouth can be in it, but your heart is not in it. Jesus is looking at the heart. Your heart tells the whole story. And that's what he tests. Your heart. He ain't got time to hit your mouth. Your mouth is like a machine gun. It'll do all day long. But your heart is somewhat cold. And you expect Jesus to do this. You expect Jesus to do that. How can he do that when you're out of order? It's not going to work, my brothers and sisters. I'm just going to keep it real with you. It's not going to work. I'll turn our Bible to Ezekiel. Ezekiel 33. And we're going to read verse 31. Ezekiel 33, and we're going to read verse 31. And if you have it, let the church say amen. Amen. My people come to you as they usually do and sit before you to listen to your words, but they do not put them into practice with their mouth. They express devotion, but what their hearts are greedy for in just gain. See? Y'all putting on a show for American life. See, your heart trying to gain something from Jesus. And he said, I know who's I know who's in addition for American life. I know who's won reward. I know who won first prize. He already know that. Because your heart is set up for the greed. Your heart is not set up for Jesus. Your heart is not in tune with him. So that's why you are out of control. That's why. That's why things are not working out for you. Just check yourself. You got to examine yourself. Why am I not getting this? Why am I not getting that? Why so-and-so can't get me blessings? Why so-and-so can't get these new cars? Why so-and-so can move to a new house? Why so-and-so can go on these, on, these, on, these, on these business trips? It's because their heart is lined up. They got everything in order. It's Jesus, family, and so on. But when they praise, they praise from their heart. They don't praise from their mouth. When they praise, they ain't got to put on no show. When they praise, they ain't got to praise and put on no act. When they praise, they ain't doing the to, to, to set up for American life. They praise is real. Jesus is looking for some people who praise. It's real. Now, when a football game come on and it's a championship, look how you praise for them football players. When it's an NBA championship, look how you praise for them. When it's a soccer game, come on, look how you praise for them. When you see your favorite actor or actress or favorite musician, look how you praise for them. You praise like it ain't nothing. But when it comes to Jesus, you don't praise him like that. When it comes to Jesus, you don't glorify him like that. When it comes to Jesus, you don't magnify him like that. When it comes to Jesus, you don't exalt his holy, you don't exalt his holy name right now. Jesus is looking for some people who's going to praise them with their heart but not looking or asking for anything. That's what he's looking for. Are you a fan of Jesus or are you a fan of the American life? Which one? Which one? Because he already know who his number one fan is. He already know who's going to praise him for real. He already know who's going to glorify him for real. He already know who's going to magnify and exalt his holy name for real. He already know. They ain't looking for no reward. They ain't put on no show. They ain't put on no act. They ain't auditioning for no American now. They praise is real. They praise is what they do. That's why everything about them is lining up. I remember you look at behind the scenes about MC Hammer. And he'll tell you everything. He said the first thing that he messed up at when he realized that his life was out of control after making millions and millions of dollars. He said it was career first, family second, and he said somewhere later down the road, it was Jesus. He said, but if, if I, and he said, if I'd have had Jesus first, he said, if I'd have had Jesus first, my family, then my career, he said everything would have been lined up. He said, but I had to go and examine myself because I had Jesus somewhere down the line. He said it was all about my career first. Then he said it was all about my family. Then he said it was something else. Then he said, then later on, it came from Jesus. And he said, when he realized, he said, everything about my life was out of control. I was out of order. Everything fell apart. 
everything start breaking. If things are starting falling apart in your life right now, if things are breaking right now, if things are starting to happen in your life right now, it's because you are out of order. And when you are out of order, that means that you do not have Jesus first place in your life or in your heart whatsoever. I'm going to keep it real be honest with you. If things are not going right in your life, and it's been not going right for quite some time, that's because you don't have Jesus first place in your life. That means it's something in your life. It's something about you that is out of order. It's time for you to check yourself. It's time to examine yourself and see what is out of order. But if you put Jesus, good God Almighty, first place, you ain't got to take my word for it. But I promise you, your life will be in order. Amen. Amen. Let's turn our Bible to Matthew 15, and we're going to read verses 7 through 9. Matthew chapter 15, and we're going to read verses 7 through 9. If you have your Bibles open, let the church say amen. Amen, hallelujah. You hypocrites, Isaiah was right when he prophesied what? About you, my brothers. About you, my sisters. These people honor me with their lips like you got lip service. This is not a lip service deal. This is not American Idol. That you are setting up to win a contract. Either you got praise service or you got lip service. A lot of y'all be doing lip service right now. But their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teaching are but rules taught by man. Look at many times Jesus said that. That their hearts are far from me. You are out of control because you are having lip service. This is not American life, my brothers. This is not American life, my sisters. It's time for y'all to get your life in order. If you're going to praise, praise for real. Either you're going to be praise service or lip service. Which one is going to be? Praise service or lip service. Which one is going to be? Because this ain't American life. My God is real. My God is awesome. And if your life is out of control, and if your life is out of order, it's time for you to get your life back in order right now. It's something that you are doing while your life is out of order. Trust me. All it do is take about a second to examine yourself, and your stuff going to speak to you and say, I don't have Jesus first place. Put him first place. You will see how things will line up in your life. Amen. Amen. And if this word is for you, you know God is talking to you. Give him some thanks and praise and glory in the house of the Lord right now today. Can you please pray with me? Lord Jesus, I ask of you to come into our life to guide us, direct us, use us. I believe right now today in the mighty name of Jesus. But I was praying in simple little prayer that God is already working everything God in our life right now today. And if you ever want to get in contact with me, leave me a comment. My YouTube channel is with us.lt. Always keep Jesus first place. Always seek him. Always honor him. Always keep your eyes focused on Jesus. Because he is the author and perfecter of your faith. You continue to hold on to his unchangeable hand. Don't you dare let it go. I don't care how hard it is. I don't care how difficult it is. I don't care how painful it is. It don't take Jesus but a second and your whole life will turn around. You continue to trust him. You continue to praise him. You continue to glorify him. You continue to magnify and shout his holy name. Don't you dare stop praising. This ain't lip service. This is praise service. We ain't setting up an American night audition. You praise him with your heart. You continue to trust him no matter what. You continue to pick up your crosses and follow Jesus. You continue to walk with him. You choose faith over fear. Always continue to pray for your fellow brothers and sisters. It doesn't matter if you know them. It doesn't matter if you ever seen their face. Prayer help and prayer change things. I'm always going to continue to keep y'all in prayer, my brothers and sisters. The only thing that I ask y'all guys to do for me is continue to keep me in prayer and keep me lifted up too. I'm serving Minister LT. I love y'all. Stay blessed. In Jesus' name, amen.